Hello everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm assuming yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Second, second. There all set. Hello everyone. Let's go ahead and begin this stream. So this stream um, is mostly a Q&A stream. So if you have any questions, start uh, writing them. If you're in the Facebook group, I saw that no one mentioned any or messaged me any questions on the Facebook. Um, usually I have to write a comment. I think that's why it happened. People were confused. There's a few of them. Oh, okay. And there's already a few questions yeah. in the Facebook? Yeah. Dang. The, today's Facebook, right? Uh, uh, oh, snap. Different one. Is that the same one? Oh, well, yeah. That's, that's it's the same it's all right yeah okay we're good um all right so i'm gonna be drawing and uh answering questions but before i do i wanted to make an announcement we are actually for, at the end of may we're gonna be in two different places okay uh the first place we're gonna be is in uh barcelona oh yeah we're going to spain y'all we're gonna hang out with everyone um it's gonna be me uh, my good friend dan levisi uh, Gerard Perel, who's a, I believe is a local, um, and then you have Kaelin Chalk, John Paladora, and Maki Planas. Um, just to give you guys some kind of scope of who we are, you know, everyone in here should probably know who I am, so I don't really need to introduce myself. For anyone who's listening, um, you know, concept artist for movies and games, et cetera, et cetera. Now working on some VR stuff, so now I can put that on my resume. Virtual reality, dude, it's... It's a trip, man. I, I'm pretty excited. Um, and then, uh, in fact, after this stream, I'm going to get working on some of that stuff. But then uh, we got uh, Dan Levisi, you know, working currently on his own IP. He's getting a, a major movie deal. He's got the guy who did, I believe it was Warrior, to be directing that movie of his, which is going to be crazy. Um, and then we have uh, Gerard Perel, who I believe is an illustrator. Also works in games and films. And then we got Kalen Chalk, also game and films. Uh, used to work at ILM. Uh, now he's like a teacher and helps me run my own school and he teaches online tutorials as well. If you can find those on my website, his tutorials specifically. And here's the thing, if you buy his tutorials, he gets the money. I don't get any of that. It's, it's actually his Gumroad and it's all his. So, And that's kind of the way that I like it. In fact, in the future, I want to kind of do that for other artists who are looking to, you know, sell some decent tutorials. And then we got John, Pol John Paladora from Blizzard, uh, currently working on Overwatch, which is freaking fun. In fact, after the stream, before I get started on my work, I'm probably going to play another round of Overwatch. And then we got Maki, uh, which, who used to be one of our students, and Maki is, like, killer. Like, he's really good. And... Uh, I, you know, we wanted him to come do a demo, and this is something that I think is going to be really exciting to see and hear from. And the thing about Maki is that I believe, like, he, he's over, still at Six More Vodka, but he was really reluctant, and uh, I gave him a little nudge, and then he did it, and he proved his worth, and now he's probably doing epic stuff that's beyond my own abilities. <laughs> I think Maki has surpassed his master for sure. But yeah, it should be a good workshop, um... It's going to be like a few speakers a day. There's going to be time for portfolio reviews. There's going to be time for uh, us to interact. There's going to be after parties and hanging out with one another. Um, it's going to be a really good event. So if you're in the area and you feel like this is something you could do, trust me, it will be a lot of fun. You will enjoy it. Um, we did one in Brazil uh, last year. Life-changing. It was a lot of fun. We changed a lot of young uh, lives and old lives. Uh, we ch like really helped these artists really see that there was a potential uh and what we did with that event we brought artists that were from that country and we did the same thing here you know uh and the people that are hosting it are also going to have their opportunity to talk about it and talk about their own experiences and how they made it because these people are also um working individuals so please please uh if you haven't been to one of our events please go we're trying to bring it to people and if you make this a success, then it'll make it easier for us to come back the following year or go to other places in, you know, across the ocean. Uh, because it's really easy to do events here in America. So, yeah, um, 
I'm going to give you guys a link. I'm going to send this link to you, John, so you can send it to everybody in the Twitch stream. And if you follow me on Facebook, I'll post it on my Facebook, too. And I'll, I'll make an official announcement there as well. Uh, anyway. And then we have a mailing list, too. We're going to do all that kind of stuff. So everybody will be able to know what's up. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. I'm going to start painting. No oh, snaps. All right, I'll do it then. While that's happening, while that's happening, so let's go ahead. Let's get started. Oh, whoops. Hold on. I'm gonna have echo if I don't do that. All right, there you go. Here, let me pop out the chat actually. Yeah, I forgot. I can. <coughs> ah, bless me. <laughs> can pop out the chat so I can send links. Did everyone get that link? I'll send it again, just in case. Yeah, Sweet. Cool. Alright. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start drawing. You know, Photoshop has some pretty cool brushes. And I decided that I want to get them back. I think it's basic brushes append. Nah, it's not. But yeah, you can start asking um, the first set of questions. Alright, the first one says How much is too much work? When uh, when do you know when to stop? And what, or what I mean is when you work hard but you don't know how much is required to make it worth being called hard work? Great question. And I'll answer it once I fix this mess I just made for myself right now. Hold on. Uh, I'll start right here. Yeah, I was messing with these brushes recently. It's like the, the traditional like Photoshop brushes. And I was like enjoying them actually. I thought they were pretty cool. cool. M brushes? Pend. Yeah, just not it. I'll have to, to restart the brushes. Okay, let me save this to the desktop real fast. Okay. And then we'll just reset. Oh, I can append that? Nah, it's fine. I don't want to do that. It's too much work. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, it's like I was. I, I usually don't mess with these brushes because they're kind of weird, but then I was like, well, why not? Because when I started my new job, I, I, I had like basically Photoshop start over, and um, I was just like, whoa, this is like, this is pretty cool. And I never considered using this stuff before, but now, why not? It's pretty great. Like, you, you see what's going on, John? Like, you can like, the base of the tilt of your pen, like if I have it like, straight on it. I think it would make more sense if I had a Cintiq, but I don't need a Cintiq. Um, but if I turn it to the side, it pays attention to that. As if, like, I'm, like, really... But it just, you know, it's still not there. Like, it's, it's mostly because of the pen. The pen itself. Uh, maybe I need a newer pen. Um, anyways, so the question was about, like, how do you know you've worked hard enough, right? Uh, if I had to, like, kind of just nail it really simply... Um, well, the question usually, you know, it makes sense, you know, I understand why people ask such a question, because, you know, they're, they're, they're afraid that maybe, you know, they're not working hard enough, or there's a day that they only put in, like, 12 hours instead of 17 hours, you know, um, and that's understandable, like, I understand, like, you might feel like you're, you're falling behind, um, but the reality is, like, why why are you in such a hurry? You know, a lot of a lot of you guys are just in such a hurry to like be good. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. It takes it takes much longer, it takes way longer to be really good at anything. And you know, if you want to really be good at it, you gotta you gotta wait. And for me, like, what I discovered is that. 
you know, with this, like, you know, this sense of, like, this, this sense of just constantly becoming the best you possibly can is a really bad system. And it's funny because me and my, my best friend were talking about this um, at, at lunch one day, and he, he was just talking about, like, like this, this attitude of just everybody, like, like he listened to this stream from another really, really good uh, artist, and he was kind of disagreed with one of the statements that this person made. He's like, because the, st the statement basically was like pretty much what you get, what you're implying towards. Like, he's like, if you're not putting in twenty thousand hours a day, you're not working hard enough. Um, and I have friends who believe this too, like who really like you got to, you know, bleed to death to make any real, uh, you know, gain in this, in this world. And the reality is that a lot of great artists did work very hard, but the, the, also the reality is they didn't work so hard that they almost killed themselves, uh, every moment of their waking career. You know, they, they definitely might've worked hard enough where they like, you know, felt really exhausted or they overworked themselves, but it's never, it was never to the point of you know, like, I think that happens more towards the end, like, where I'm at, like, because I'm doing so many things now, now I feel like I'm really working crazy hard, and it's weird, because, like, you know, I feel like maybe when I first started, I actually wasn't working as hard as I, like, presumed I was, like, like, assumed that I was doing, you know, because I feel like this is the hardest I've ever worked, you know, now, not then, not back when I first started, but now, and I, I wonder if that's because, you know, I'm actually working, like, harder nowadays. Because back in the day, it didn't feel like that. It felt like I was just doing things for fun, and it was a lot of, it was a lot of enjoyment with that. And so, for me, I think, I think what's really important is that you're just constantly working. Now, what does that mean specifically? Well, as long as you're drawing, and as long as you're keeping pace with your your practice and your studies and as long as you're you're feeling like you're learning something new every day um, whether you spent two hours that day or 20 hours that day you know as long as you feel like you learn something new um, at least every day then I feel like that's progress now what does learning something new mean does it mean like you before you couldn't paint metal now you can paint metal no I'm talking about like Maybe you didn't realize you were doing this wrong, and now you're going to try to stop doing that. Uh, but you still don't know how to paint, let's say, metal, or you still don't know how to, uh, you don't understand materials still. You know? These, these types of problems that, where you solve, like, little things, little epiphanies, versus just, like, these huge, huge things that are, like, 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 really holding you back, obviously. Like, something like not understanding your anatomy. You know, you still don't understand your anatomy, and you're just like, well, I don't understand my anatomy, and I spent, you know, 20 hours the last day, and I still don't understand it. And then you're like, well, I give up then, right? Like, or I feel, I feel like I don't know what to do. Um, that's the wrong attitude, because it shouldn't, like, why should you understand something so complicated, so, so, like, rigorous in a matter of days? You know, like, there's some people that really have spent their whole careers mastering this thing. And for you to just be, like, kind of weirdly uh, delusional about, like, all of a sudden being so good or such such a master of something uh, actually is detrimental to your growth, right? Because what it does is it actually puts you back because what ends up happening is you start feeling uh, bad uh, about yourself, you know, and you feel like you, you're a failure. In fact, when, what I do with my students a lot of the times is remind them to stop thinking this way. A lot of them will do my homework, and then they come back to me and, ah, oh, man, I suck, I'm the worst. And I, I tell them, no, it's not, a, it's not such a big deal. And I really kind of show them with their own work how they've progressed, how they've grown, how they're great artists, how they're becoming greater, better artists with time. And remind them that this is a, this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. And if they treat, keep treating it like a sprint, uh, they sprint as hard as they can for like like a half a mile uh, or a quarter mile and then they get worn out and then they get they get upset because they still have to run 25 miles right it's like no it's slow and steady even if you're walking you're still moving forward <laughs> you know the 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 whole tortoise and the hare story applies to this really really well but just to kind of make it really applicable to what I mean is that in the story of the tortoise of the hare the hare takes a break 
and then all of a sudden, you know, gets passed up by the tortoise. But a better way of thinking of this is that not so much that the tortoise or the hare took a break. That's like someone that has really put a lot of effort and like uh, momentum in one ability, and then all of a sudden, you know, decides, well, I'm good now. But someone who has kept the same pace and just didn't stop is someone who's going to, you know, going to finish a race and potentially win. Uh, but in, in the scope of what I'm trying to get across is that it's not so much like you're trying to beat somebody, right? It's not so much you're trying to beat yourself or standards that you've put onto yourself. It's just more about a matter of understanding that these things take time. And if you want to sustain growth, then you need to stop treating it like you got you had to know it like yesterday. Uh, otherwise, you're a complete failure. Because um, the people who truly fail are the ones that stop, who give up, right? Uh, and then that's that's really what failure is, uh, because you know making a mistake and not uh, doing well at something um, is absolutely fine. In fact, it's required in terms of growth. You got to break uh, a few bones before you you know have them grow back stronger, or more better yet, you have to tear some muscle fibers before the muscle comes back stronger. And if you if you continuously think that you're not supposed to be struggling, you continuously think that you're not supposed to be having a hard time, you can cons consistently think that you're just doing a bad job of learning, um, you're, you're, you're not thinking about this the right way. Because there is no artist that I have met that will tell you that it was easy all the way through. There was a time where I didn't understand how to study correctly. There was a time where I didn't understand how to become uh, the better artist that I am. Um, there was a time where I didn't understand design. There was a time where I didn't understand enough anatomy. Or there was a time where I didn't understand Photoshop. There was a time where I didn't understand lots of different things. But over time, I learned and I got better and I've adapted. And I, like, I've been going on almost a decade now, and I'm, I'm getting pretty good and I'm getting better and better. Especially the more I draw, especially the more uh, worlds that I explore. For instance, I'm doing some VR stuff and I'm, I'm doing a style that I haven't done. Uh, much of and it's it's pretty exciting <clears throat> and because I'm learning a ton of new stuff and I'm only going to become a better artist the more I do it All right so with that being said um, yeah I hope hope that helps answer that question is there any other questions now Cool. Uh, next question says, Hey guys, on the vegan subject, oh, snap. I happened to switch cold turkey. Oh boy. No, no pun intended. <laughs> well, if you're vegan, then you don't, yeah, you don't kill turkeys, right? I guess they are still cold. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> It's been pretty good, Anthony. Uh, what what if there's a moment in which eating vegan is tricky or less feasible? Say on a family outing or some carnivor carnivorous occasion, and you don't want to be that guy. Do you or go with the flow or insist on finding a veggie meal? Uh, I would say insist. If you you live in a place where that's probably more like clearly accessible then do it you know um there's a thing that my friend was talking to me about it's called he calls it the gandhi vegan or a vegan gandhi or or dalai lama vegan or something like that i forget exactly but basically like the dalai lama was a vegan um but only like only if he had the choice of food okay like if he could choose what to eat then he would always choose to be vegan, right? But if he couldn't choose, then he would eat the food of his guests, the food of the culture. You know, like if, like for instance, like if I were to travel to Barcelona and then, like you know, uh, these people say, "Hey, this is something I made for you. Like I want you to eat it," you know, because it's like specially made for you. And, and that's a very hard situation, right? And I think in that occasion, it, it really, if you have the choice not to like without being rude then well yeah like don't don't do it right like be like if th that person's made this for you and they didn't know then it's harmless right like they didn't do it maliciously they're not 
challenging you. Uh, and it might be partly your fault for not letting them know ahead of time, right? Um, and if that happens, then it's fine. Like, I, I sometimes that happens, someone will give me, like, a candy, um, you know, that has milk in it. And I'll, I won't eat it, but I'll take it, you know? Um, because that's really easy to just say thank you and don't say, don't be, like, lecturing them on, like, well, let me tell you. You know, like, I, I just don't say anything. I just say, oh, thanks, you know? Because I, I know it's harmless or not. There's no intent to, like, challenge me, right? They're just they're just doing it because that's just... They don't know. And if they don't know, then this, there's no harm, right? Um, if you go to your family outings and, like, you know, your family does not know, then, you know, you're going to probably have to bite the bullet and, you know, uh, do it. Like, But, like, let's be clear. Like, once you kind of switch over, like, once you start having meat again or any a little bit of dairy it it really screws you up like you feel it like right away because your body right now uh, or at least for most people is already kind of numb to it and like you don't feel how 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 hard it is to your body for your body right um because it's just kind of constantly hard and um but when you switch over and you just have a little bit of milk or a little bit of like cheese or butter you feel it like hits you like a freight train because it happened to my wife like she had like some tacos and she was starving and there's nowhere there was no other food uh at least she didn't think there was she ordered uh you know some tacos and she ate them um luckily for me because I, I was really starving too i, I didn't want to eat them at all but i was like well they must have something and i was like do you guys have um anything other than you know beef and pork whatever and they had mushrooms so, oh yeah, can you just grill up some mushrooms? Now, yes, the grill was or was cooking with the meat, and the grill was cooking like you know with other food products that I would have would wish it wasn't. But you know, I'm not going to be going that far. I I did the best I can with what I had. Uh, what was really hard was like traveling to uh, San Francisco for GDC, and I, I had to deal with um, this restaurant we went to, which was everything was bacon everything like even the dates they had dates that were covered in bacon and i was like what the hell is going on like this is like such a really really gross circumstance of things right and so for me um yeah for me it's like really funny to kind of like be in this position uh because i don't want to be rude and like everybody wanted to i, I was clearly outvoted uh, and I didn't really make a vote anyway. And so we went, uh, and I just ate like a lot of sides because a lot of places have uh, sides, and most sides are relatively vegan. Like for instance, I got uh, hash hash browns or potatoes, like these types of things. Um, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? A monster. It's been a while. Let's do some sort of monster. But yeah, I mean, you be the judge. Um, don't be cynical. Don't be pretentious. You know, just, just understand that most people are harmless. Like, think about the time, because you switched over, right? Think about the time where you were eating meat and doing all that stuff. You weren't necessarily maliciously, like, like violent person, were you? No, you were, you were fine. You were just kind of oblivious to kind of the health, like, lack of health benefits. And also you were kind of oblivious to the ethical stuff. Uh, or maybe you knew about it, but, you know, it was just kind of one of those things where you just kind of were biased towards. But now it's a little bit easier to be unbiased, right? Um, you know, you could, you, you're could you in a better state of mind now, but but before you weren't, like, a terrible person, right? You weren't. So I think what ends up happening, I, like, from what I've seen from the a lot of these vegan videos that I watch, like, these people, like, turn on, you know, it's like it's like they turn on others, like, all of a sudden as if everybody is, like, monsters, um, but it's like just not true, and I, I I also had a little bit of that. Like I felt like people just were so like ignorant. But it was not so much that I was mad at the individuals. I was mad at the system. You know, I was mad at like the way that the system was built and that it put us in the circumstance in the first place. Um. So I mean, I wouldn't worry about it uh, if there's a time where you have to, like, not have to, but like, it's just it's just clearly like something that you you just kind of have to deal with then it's fine. You know, really, don't worry about it. It's the same, like, with eating, like, bad foods. Like, from time to time, I still eat candies and stuff, but I generally try to avoid, you know, bad foods um, that are not, like, vegan, but just, like, bad foods in general, like sodas and stuff. But every once in a while, I'll have one. Uh, because why not? 
You know, I don't have it all the time. Uh, next question from the Twitch stream says, so I recently found you guys and I just want to say your videos have been really helpful. Sweet. I'm currently in college and I'm not enjoying it at all. Oh boy. I've been wondering if I should even continue with it. Would you recommend to drop out since a degree doesn't help that much? After all the videos Anthony's done has helped my art more than the first semester. Oh, snaps. Well, appreciate the, the love and support. That's always appreciated. Um, so, uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell people to drop out of college. Uh, because, you know, I don't know your circumstance well enough. You know your circumstance better than I do. So, what I'll do is I'll set up a series of questions you should ask yourself. And then a series of, like examples of other people um and then you just kind of make the call for yourself okay and i talk about the pros and cons and you should investigate the pros and cons yourself as well so obviously uh, i also left school early so i am biased to this i left school much much earlier uh, i had a year left almost i think a year and a half but the first year and a half it wasn't a total waste because i met some of the best people in my life uh, and they were the, some of the people that influenced me in my career to this day, right? And I, I care about them deeply, and I want to, you know, keep that in mind that if anything, school brought me them, right? Now, with that being said, uh, what does school do that I was really opposed against? Well, it just was, there's just a lot of uh, weird kind of, like, bureaucracy. But more importantly, it just, like, you can tell that the 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 work and the stuff that they were teaching was just not at a very high standard and because it wasn't at such a high standard you know you know you were kind of screwed as a student if you just followed along and I had a lot of friends and colleagues that were like that they just they just followed along with what was being taught and unfortunately a lot of them did not get jobs and a lot of them still are struggling to maintain and keep you know a really decent job and it's unfortunate, man, because I care about these people and I want them to succeed. But, you know, they were banking off the idea that these people knew what they were talking about and they were going to take care of them. Um, when a school takes in so many students a year and doesn't have the manpower and the, 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 the facility to control or to maintain quality work, um, you know, it's, you're just going to have a lot of people be upset at the end of the year, right? And, and blame the school easily. But here's the thing. School is not the problem, you know, like the educational system as a whole might be pretty bad, but, but it's not so much that the school is the problem, like your school, um, and it's not necessarily the teachers, it's not necessarily that, it's just that maybe you made the wrong choice, because that school, you know, for others, it worked out, like some people will graduate and actually get jobs, you know, um, but why, why did those people work out for those people, because what those people did was say, okay, look, I'm not from this country or I'm not from this state. I live in a state where I have no access to this kind of resources. And for them, although it might not have been the best, they they found a lot of opportunity by what they were surrounded by, right? They were just, they said, look, I have facilities. I have this access to, like, Cintiqs and all the software. Like, that's where my money is really being spent. Uh, and some teachers are good. I'm just going to sit in and listen to those teachers and the other teachers, I'm just kind of, kind of just do whatever they ask. Uh, but the bare minimum, I always tell my, my, uh, my students who go to college, you know, D's gets degrees, right? No one's going to check your GPA. And, you know, a lot of people will throw at me stuff like, well, my parents, this, or like my, my ex external person that to why they cannot do such a thing. Like they have to follow along and I then I say I follow back and I say I, I have them ask these questions that I want you to ask yourself which is are you doing this for them or are you doing this for yourself because if you're doing it for them then do get the good grades like if you don't care about being an artist and you don't really care about maintaining a really good portfolio um, then do it do it for them right do all these different side projects that are going to you know throw you off and have people misdirect you in your portfolio reviews because you're going to have all kinds of crazy stuff in it that necessarily you didn't want and you're always going to be blaming someone else for why they're there right oh well my it was for a class or oh my teacher told me to do this or this is like whatever if you're going to show that to a professional and that's your answer they're not going to take you seriously right 
And so, so consider that, right? But if you don't, like, you want to to maintain good grades because you really care about what your parents did for you and they really went out on a limb, you can maintain good grades and you can maintain uh, a good portfolio. You can do both. They're both possible. But stop blaming the lack of your portfolio's quality on other people. And that's the, that leads to the second question, which is, like, it, are you doing everything in your power um, to get the information you actually need? And what I mean by that is, are you getting a portfolio, a portfolio reviewed by people that you truly believe will give you the best portfolio review? Are you looking at uh, other artists and looking at how they achieved and see what similarities that you have? Or um, differences, because sometimes they don't have anything in common, so then why compare yourself to that artist entirely, right? Um because that's also very foolish. It's, it's a little misguiding if you look at someone that, like, had a silver spoon in their mouth and they everything was given to them, and then you're like, well, like, I don't have that, so I guess I'm going to struggle. Like, no, 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 you, you should look at people that didn't have that. Or vice versa, like, I have a silver spoon in my mouth, but then, um, you know, I'm looking at these people who had a lot of trial and error and struggle in their life as a gauge, when I probably should look at someone different, you know? You know, so ask yourself, are you doing everything in your power to to get the information you need and trust me it's not as hard as you think uh you already kind of watched my videos but i'm not the only one on there right the gumroad has an extensive uh library of videos uh, there's online courses uh, i'm also a uh, part of learn squared and then i'm also like uh, a part of my own stuff but then but then aside from us there's you know cgm uh a workshops and there's mold 3d and there's like uh, digital tutors and there's etc cetera, etc cetera, like online platforms you know there's like linda Dot com. There's like all kinds of things where you can get information, and the most valuable one that I found, which is YouTube, which is almost blowing up with great and free education uh, or affordable education. There's um, Control uh, Paint, too, right? Which is freaking awesome too. I love that guy, and I, I would recommend all of these people and all of these things. There's Schoolism. Um, you know, most people don't like when I first started. I didn't have access to it nearly as half as much of all the stuff but you know i'm not trying to say that just because i didn't have access to this and you do that what are you doing like what are, what is wrong with you i'm just saying that you're gonna have this and that's what you need to work with maybe you don't have what the future people are gonna have right the future students are gonna probably have like vr mentors right like a person if you could buy oculus or vive you can like literally just have your mentor in your room with you like looking over your work right um, you might have 3D sculpting tools, which are like seriously in the work, guys. It's crazy. Um, you have different tools and softwares that are going to be even easier to work with than what I had to work with and what you had to work with, you know? So stop focusing on that, right? Start focusing on what you can find within your means. And then the next question is um, that I want you to ask yourself is, why did why are you not enjoying your experience at college and what can you do differently to make it better okay does that mean making your own concept club and having finding peers and individuals that have very similar interests and make the best of what you got um or is it leaving you know maybe there is nothing there for you that you can do it all on your own you have the self-discipline and will you can do it um but you have to ask yourself all these questions. But then at the next question after that, right, would be, can you sustain living? Can you sustain a happy lifestyle? And I don't mean, like, party every day, eating all kinds of foods, whatever you want. I'm talking about just, can you survive and can you live off of the land type of idea? Um, if not, then maybe consider that you still need to hang in tight. But, but every day you're there is going to cost that extra dollar. So you need to find, like I said, the best means to get the best education you can uh, for what would you what you're dealing with and trust me if you are able to go to a college in the first place Then you are ahead of a lot of people. Okay, so you are not in you are not um, You are entitled basically you have a lot of privileges Okay, that a lot of people do not have So you are you are amongst the minority of this world who have very little access to all this great information the minority, not the majority. You think that everyone has access to this? No. Trust me, a lot of people do not have access to this. They will eventually, because Google and Facebook is like bringing internet to the world. And when that happens, you know, it's going to be crazy. You're going to have all kinds of new kinds of artists from different countries that never had, they have no clue that concept art is even a freaking field of work. 
okay? So, so realize that you are amongst a minority of people that have access to such great tools and resources. So take advantage of that as best you can and try to live uh, in a happier circumstance too, whatever that may be. So I will say, I don't know if you should leave school, uh, but you can start to take what I've just said and see if that applies to you. And if it doesn't, then keep investigating for yourself. You know, you know what's best. And trust me, no matter what you choose to do, be really firm about it and really make sure that it is something that you um, think is best. And if you're wrong, that's fine. Mistakes are bound to happen, right? Is it good to take a break and come back in the morning when your creative juice kind of hit a wall or keep trying to crash and burn? Like yesterday, I was designing a samurai crab armor. After the third concept, I got stuck. What do you recommend? Um, so, it sounds like you didn't do a lot of research. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a question back at you. Uh, how much reference did you have in terms of pages? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to keep painting. And while uh, while we're waiting for this person to respond, um, yes, I think taking breaks is good. Of course. Because when you take a break, especially if you sleep, um, you let your brain basically reanimate the, the problems of the day and resort whatever may have been bothering you. But it's best to do that if you also have information there to kind of you know soak up and kind of marinate if you don't then you, you're you're gonna wake up still kind of stumped a bit right and so you should do a lot of research research is the cure to creative uh blocks because what all a creative block is is that you run out of ideas and you're trying to pull from knowledge that you just don't have Um, if I had to guess, and you, you you can lie too, you can say whatever you want, but the truth is this, that uh, you probably didn't do a lot of research, like you probably didn't spend more than uh, an hour, you didn't spend more than an hour doing any kind of research, and then also, um, you, you saying you only did three iterations is another clue that you might have spent too much time on the first drawing um, as well. So usually what you want to do is be knowledgeable at, at both the crabs and the samurai stuff. Like, and this is how you should gauge your, your ability. Can you explain to me? And then, then at the same time, illustrate what makes a crab or what makes a samurai. Like why and how do these two things work in the real world? Uh, yeah, I didn't have much. Yeah, see? So it's, it's it's a very common symptom whenever I have my students tell me the same thing that you just suggested. Like, this is almost almost like 99% of the reason what went wrong. Uh, and then the extra 1%, let's say they did gather all the reference and they did gather all the, the resources and they did do all the quote-unquote practice, then they might have not been mindfully paying attention. You know, they might have not been actively aware. And that's why uh, my, my class, like at Learn Square, is like devoted to this ability to teach people how to teach themselves um, because I find that a lot of times that people will think that they're studying and practicing but they really aren't and so I have like a whole class built around that um, and and the whole idea like I said is just you cannot extract information from nowhere trust me on this okay you don't know enough about whatever it is you're trying to draw that's why you're creative that's why you're creatively blocked okay it's like if we were to go if we were to switch this to a physical activity and we were to go to the gym and I would ask you to do 200 push-ups and you've never done a push-up for years like why would you think you why would I think that you can do 200 push-ups right it makes sense right you have to build up to that you have to build up so you have to learn how to do basic push-ups and then the next level up your push-ups and then more push-ups and then eventually 200 push-ups will become a cinch but after some extensive training right 
Like, why are you not a scientist? For, like, why can't you be, why can't you just go up to NASA and be like, give me a job? Like, why can't you do that? Like, what is the number one reason why you can't do that? It's pretty simple now, right? It's very, very, very basic. Like, you don't just all of a sudden start writing equations, right? And say, I'm a scientist, right? You have to do a little bit more than that before you can even be considered. All right. Next question. E. What's up, AJ? Could you What's talk, up? Could you talk briefly What's up? on how you would study mat materials? I'm trying to understand metal and believe the first step is mat surfaces. You... I actually have a tutorial all about this. Um, it's it's uh, painting with materials, I believe. <clears throat> so I really go in depth. It's I think it's cheap, too. It's like under $5 for sure. Uh, but... You don't have to buy it, because I'll explain it to you. But if you still feel the need to know more, then go for it. Um, so matte material is really simple. Uh, you know, matte is essentially really, really diffused, like, light on a material. Okay? And when it comes down to it... When it comes down to it, uh, when you have a, a matte material... Whoops. This is pretty much what's happening, right? You just... Like, the light is hitting the surface. You know? And... You can't really see much of the reflections or whatever. Right? Like, this is... This is pretty much Matt. Matt basically means the light is diffused all over but like a uh let's say we were to do a more reflective material then we would have well if we were to change the light directions just so we could make sense yeah that works so now if we were to do this uh and put this in here so now the difference here, right, like is that the this material is highly reflective, okay? You know, you, you see the difference now, right? Like it's like because we can actually see the light source in the material. And what Matt is basically saying is that, oh, okay, well, this is the, the material is diffused more over. And what I've done for the last... Oh, sorry. For the last, like, seven years, I, um, like, been painting this way, where I consider the light, uh, the three properties of light, and the percentage of which they're reacting, which is how much is it reflecting, how much is it refracting, which is how much is it going through the form, and then how much is it absorbing, and usually it's more about reflecting and absorption, uh, because some things are just mostly refractive, right? So... Uh, or not all things are refractive, which is like that light goes right through it. And I just think about that, and I keep that in consideration. And then getting into metals and or hard <laughs> materials, then you just start thinking to yourself, because like, why is this material more reflective? It's because it's harder, right? Why is it more matte? It's because it's softer. It's taking a little bit more of that light, okay? And if you keep this in mind... You, it makes it a little bit easier to start painting a little bit better. But Scott Robertson has a lot of good video tutorials too on this whole matter. So uh, I think if you have an opportunity, or like his book too, his book's great, like How to Render. Um, you go there, you find a lot of amazing resources on how to draw and paint better. Um, and I would like follow that book religiously. It's very technical. Um, but yeah, like go in there, really understand it. Uh, I mean, if you spend like a whole, like, few months just in that book just training yourself you'll come out a champion for sure but yeah materials to me are very simple very basic uh, but they, they don't seem that way right they seem very very like out of this world uh, but when you start to get better at it you start realizing it's really simple and what what ends up happening I think is that I just start to see the patterns a little bit easier as time goes by so hope that helps out buddy and uh, good luck 
says, hey guys, on the vegan subject, oh, it's the same one, he asked in Facebook and on Twitch, there you go, uh, next one says, Key. says, how would you deal with wrist pain slash purple tongue, I signed up for three, three courses on Learn Squared, but once I get oh, into the drawing, my wrist starts to hurt a lot. Burning pins and needles, and if I push too hard, it even keeps me up at night. I really don't want to end up having surgery, so I stop drawing around the end of the first week. Have you dealt with this before, and do you have any advice about it? I'm using Cintiq on an arm. Cintiq on an arm, by the way. Um, take more breaks. Stretch and then change your diet. I used to have a uh, carpal tunnel too. It's gone. Don't have it at all. My my hand uh, used to get really numb. John, remember like I used to put my arm up, like yeah. raise it. No, it. Hasn't happened ever since like I changed my diet. Really? Not, not even a little bit. And I used to sleep, and my whole arm. Like remember I told you about that? Like I would wake up, like my whole right arm yeah. would just be fucking numb. Gone. Completely gone. Um. Yeah. Because uh, what what is carpal tunnel? What's going on? It's like a, it's a clogging in the in your carpal tunnel, right? And that shit is usually from uh, let, let's investigate. Let's I don't want to, but like from what I was reading, when I like all the benefits of vegan diets, and one one of the things says is that your carpal tunnel and like the pins and needles that you have when you sleep, even like a lot of nerve um, things will be kind of fixed because. Usually what's plugging that shit up is all that extra fat or extra just cholesterol, right? Carpal tunnel. Treated by medical. Because what they, I think what they do in carpal tunnel is they remove all that shit that's like clogging your goddamn stuff. And so, so usually what they, what usually what happens when you switch to a, a diet that is mostly of plants um yeah what is what causes it the pain in your see the excess pressure of the wrist obstruction of blood flow yeah okay so pretty much anything that obstructs blood flow right like that that's the thing like most things that are being obstructed by blood flow they're actually contributed by diet, okay? Because what ends up happening when you switch over to a, a, a diet that's mostly consistent of cholesterol-free foods and low-saturated foods, so low-saturated fat foods, is that all that extra cholesterol doesn't plaque up into your arteries. And when your, your shit isn't plaqued up, then blood flows so smooth. Right, like this is like your typical looking artery from your typical Western diet. It's just like this really frail looking mother effer, and then this is like your your same arteries, but then like on a vegan diet, you see the difference, right? Like this or a plant based diet, like a whole foods plant based diet, because what what ends up happening is that because like why does it look so crappy? Is because well, because all this like plaque is up in your your shit. And, like, blood cannot get through. And so that's why a good sign of, uh, like, you might have some really bad clogged arteries is, like, stuff like carpal tunnel, uh, erectile dysfunction, right? You can't get boners, right? That's, that's a really good sign that you also might get a heart attack one day, like, really easily. Uh, because heart attacks, what is that? What is, what's going on there is basically clogged arteries to one of the most important, um, blood vessels in your in your body which is towards to your heart right what's pumping all the blood everywhere and if your blood if your blood can't leave and go through your heart then you're kind of fucked right you go through a heart, you get a heart attack uh or you have a stroke um or you go through many other problems and so this is like another thing like if you have carpal tunnel or any kind of like numbing pain in your body it's really just because your your blood flow is not really good um and the, the only way to really cure that is to either have surgery in your wrist, which you don't want to do, which I, 
I'm, I'm cool with you trying to avoid that. Or if you want an alternative solution, and I wouldn't suggest going completely vegan. I, I really like. I really want everybody to understand the benefits of it, but I understand it's like pretty fucking hard. But try this. Just try to eat less uh, meat and less cheese and less eggs, especially less eggs, um, especially the yolk of the eggs. You know, uh, anything that has a high cholesterol, avoid that uh, for a few weeks and then try for a month because it's almost immediate like how quickly this stuff starts to solve your problems. Um, and I want to say like in a day, but like definitely in weeks, you'll start seeing significant differences in your, your, your health and your physique. Um, a good tip would be if you can avoid it, then avoid it. Like if you go to a restaurant and instead of getting like the triple decker cheeseburger with cheese, like double cheese on the cheese and then melted on top of an egg, you know, like try to avoid that. Uh, but like if you could get like, like I wouldn't even say get salads either. Like try to get something like, like rice, like paellas are really good or like rice and beans or beans, like some, pastas are good too you know just don't get the cheese or try to ask them to get the the cheese free version of the the pasta if they have one uh, because pasta doesn't necessarily have to have any of that stuff right you can have straight up pasta like white pasta with like uh tomato sauce and bam bomb diggity and so there's there's plenty of things you can substitute like what we used to do john was like we would actually go and get um like we would go to tofu house right and we would get just without the, I would just get it without the the meat. I would just get the veggies. And it was actually fine. It tasted just as good. It's freaking bomb, actually. It's still really good. Um, that was, like, really easy to do. Those are, like, the, one of the easiest things to do. And see if that helps. Because for, for whatever reason, mine's gone. Like, I don't have any of that anymore. It's, like, completely gone. And I wasn't even, pay I, I didn't do that. I didn't switch for that reason. If that makes sense. Like, I was not, like, I gotta get rid of this carpet no. I just did not, it just didn't happen. But before, what I used to do was, like, I basically would take breaks every 10 to 20 minutes, put my arm straight up above my head uh, for about, like, a minute or two, and then get back to it. Like, every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, but now, like, I've been painting for, like, like, the last hour, and I feel freaking fine. And that was, like, man, that was, it makes a lot of sense, because we used to have Korean barbecue every fucking day too right that did not help <laughs> and the brisket pretty much is straight up just fat and cholesterol cholesterol tastes delicious someone said uh where, where am i supposed to get the protein <laughs> were they joking or are they serious because <laughs> i know that's like a common <laughs> it's a common like because there, there there's really things you should be worried about like b12 and then vitamin d in fact i'm always worried about you john so I'm not sure if you're ever, yeah, you're getting sun. Because I know I get, I know I do it all the time. B12 and vitamin D. And here's the thing. B12 and vitamin D are not a vegan or a, a vegetarian unique problem. This is an all-American Western diet problem. Okay, you, this is just like, you just don't get these. It, it just becomes more clear uh, because when you go off of like meat, for instance, where they basically all, almost all meat is infused with B12 and vitamin D because that's what they feed the cattle, right? <clears throat> that's what they feed cattle. And so we get it because of secondary supplement, basically. Uh, but animals don't naturally come with this shit either, okay? Like animal meat doesn't have this stuff naturally. The animal has to eat it or forget it somehow. And cows, some cows don't get outside, unfortunately. And some cows are not eating fresh food or fresh water anymore, so they're not getting their bacteria. So what do we have to do? We usually have to fuck them with this stuff, right? And they're not getting enough of it either. And so, uh, so this is a problem that's just like everybody needs to be aware of, regardless of what your diet is right now. Um, yeah, because Bea had a vitamin D deficiency before, right? Yeah. And then she talked to me about that. Yeah. Now it's like really bad, right? <laughs> And so, but everything else was fine. Like, she was 100% great, except for the, her vitamin D, right? And, but she already had a skin condition, and I think it just amplified whenever she switched. But she, she's not worried about it at all. She's, like, committed to this diet. She's like, no, I feel great, though, you know? But I don't want to die because of bad bones. And so she's going to take, has to take, like, these extra supplements. But one of our good friends 
also has a sev- like a severe vitamin D deficiency, right? And she has to get it injected. Wow. And she's not vegan. She's like eating regular like Western diet, you know. So and you know her too. Like I'll tell you after. But like um, so don't don't think that this is a vegan problem. So the whole protein thing is a stupid thing. Don't worry about yeah. protein. Is like the last thing you should be worried about. Protein is in every fucking thing you can possibly eat. Everything that you can eat. Um, in fact, the for pound or calorie uh, per calorie, kale has almost twice as much protein than uh, chicken. That means if you were to eat three hundred calories, I think it has twice or one point five times more. Um, if you were to eat 300 calories worth of kale, you're going to get way more protein from that than if you were to eat 300 calories of chicken. And it's funny because 300 calories of kale is like ginormous serving. It's like huge amount, like a, a super large bowl that you would prepare a, like a roasted turkey in versus like a small children's plate of chicken. So you see, see the problem here? Because most people do not eat this much chicken. They usually eat like this much chicken, and then bam, you're already ex- you're already excess in terms of what you should have had for that daily intake, right? Where you have to really try to eat a lot of fucking kale to to get the excess calories, right? Like it's hard. Like you saw like, the plates that I would make. That's like still like under a hundred calories. It's like I eat like a huge plate of that stuff, and it's still that's why I have to eat like a lot of rice and beans. Uh, tortillas are good too for like calorie dense <coughs> density. Uh, shakes because you can put like you know protein powder or I don't even use protein powder anymore. Uh, I just put like a lot of uh, oats in my my shakes now because oats have a lot of uh, calories. It's not so much the protein that I'm worried about; it's the calories because you're just not getting as much uh, based off of what you're used to in terms of your proportions. Which means you, you can eat more food than you would normally think you could eat. So yeah, where do you get your protein? Uh, from everything. <laughs> from anything and everything I put in my mouth. Alright, we can do a lightning round. I think so. I think the Learn Square will will have some stuff going. I don't know sure for exactly though. We'll we'll talk about it when it comes through. But uh, yeah, I, I'll st- still be teaching online. It's just something that I'm gonna do. I love it. I love teaching and helping people out. It's like my favorite thing. Next question says: In a studio environment, what's expected from a junior artist versus a senior artist? Uh, it's just it's just an experience thing. It's really nothing different. I think um, a senior artist, what they are expected to do is probably more hero characters or hero props or hero environments uh, where a junior works on more of the secondary characters and props. But that's pretty much it. It's not as, like, in terms of workload and work, like, uh, you you get the same amount of work in terms of how much you guys are working on. It's just, like, the quality of the work might be different. Like, you might be working on some secondary stuff, you know? If I want to have a concept art portfolio and I want to do both 2D and 3D, aren't people going to get confused uh, for me as a character artist who does models from other people's concepts? Yeah, they'll, they'll get confused. So that's why I think it's best to just be really clear on what you want to do and just do it really well. Uh, if you want to do both, then uh, make it very clear you want to do both. You know, the best way to do that is, like, show a concept that you did and then take it to finish. Um, but the, the problem is not so much about the confusion. The problem is about, are you good at, though? Like, are good at that, though? Like, a lot of people are are generally going to critique the quality, not the quantity or the, the diversity. Um, they will They might say something about the diversity. They might critique something about the quantity. But what they're really avoiding is saying that you just suck. <laughs> okay? Um, that you're just not good enough. And it's hard to say that, tell that to somebody, especially in person. And so uh, be very clear and do not be delus- delusional <laughs> of the quality of your work. Like, trust that you might not be good enough, and that's the problem, not so much that people are confused with what you want to do. Because I know plenty of people who do both, uh, but they're really good at both. I 
Notice you never need to use the color window and edit it manually. How do you do these paintings when, or then when you change the color, is it a keyboard shortcut? If so, what would it be? Uh, default keyboard shortcuts is D for default palette. So let's say I'm picking this gray right now, I hold Alt. So now I'm painting with this gray. But then if I press D, it should be black. And if I press X, it should be white. And then with those with those combinations of pressing Alt to get the color that I want, and with black and with pen pressure, I can like get the value that I want by pen pressure, you know, in both directions by pressing D and then pressing X. <clears throat> and then um, I can also mix, obviously, you know, colors. So this isn't quite white. And that's pretty much it. Um, and that's specifically for no color, really, because it's really I'm only using black and white, which are colors, but you get what I'm saying. Um, but when it comes to color, uh, I always will use a color wheel. But I usually just pop it up and just keep it next to me. And yeah, that's, that's obviously hotkey too. And that's a default hotkey, F6. <laughs> Next question says, Can you tell us how to best prepare for an art event, uh, recruitment sessions, and meetings, uh, art meeting art directors from there? Yeah, uh, just have a portfolio that you're proud of, that you think you put the best effort uh, forward, and then just be friendly. Uh, people are going to give you all kinds of advice. They're going to tell you one thing, and then another person is going to tell you a whole different thing. So just kind of average out the critiques. Um, also, consider who's critiquing you. Like if you're getting critiqued by a company that only cares about photorealistic stuff, and they critique your your work and tell you that your stuff's not photorealistic, but yet you want to work for like Pixar and Disney, that that might not be the most genuine critique to who you are. Right, so I wouldn't be upset about that, uh, but like vice versa. Let's say you have like more realistic stuff in your portfolio, and someone tells you that you need more style or more character in your your work, um, then that might be true. But you know, some realistic companies don't care about that; they only care about really cool drawings. So consider that as well. Like consider that maybe the person critiquing you is just critiquing you based off of what they know they need, not so much what you need. Okay, and then, um, but you know, average it out and be friendly, you know, and if you have your best work, then people are going to give you the best critiques because if they, if you have nothing in your portfolio, they have like three pieces in your portfolio, then they're going to say, well, you need more work in your portfolio. And that's going to, that's going to be like the whole, like five minute of their critique is about how you need more work. And that's something that you could have answered on your own, uh, versus, uh, if you had like 20 pieces in your portfolio and you're ready to get it critiqued and they're like okay let me tell you what, because now the quantity part is not a problem right so maybe now they'll critique the quality of it but then again that's another thing but maybe you have 24 pieces of just sketches or loose paintings then they're like well you don't have any finished paintings so then then again that's another critique that you could have probably avoided if you would have had finished paintings so now you have finished paintings and a lot of paintings and then you get that critique do you see like the kind of critique that they have to give you now is more based on substance rather than just superficial yeah, stuff later, so. so that's something that i would say you want to really really keep in mind whenever you're working on uh, going to these events and just be friendly to everyone who cares if they're art director who cares that they're just a student make friends with anyone and everybody that's the best way to go about networking because everyone deserves you know a fair shot and not everybody just because they're awesome at whatever they may be is an awesome person okay keep that in mind as well same guy said can you include fan art yeah, of course. As long as it's good. I think people should worry less about that kind of stuff and worry more about quality. Like, is it good fan art? Is it different? Is it, like, specifically, like, another drawing of a Dragon Ball Z character that you can find on DeviantArt? If so, then maybe it's not going to be the best. But is it, like, a redesign of D Dragon Ball Z but in the world of Game of Thrones, you know? That, that, that's something that's interesting. That's something that a recruiter can kind of see the potential of your concepting abilities. Not like a redrawing of a Dragon Ball Z character. No one's going to want to see that. Like, always consider what the employer wants to see. Don't consider necessarily 
what you think is good. Uh, I would say draw what you like, but don't be delusional either. Don't be like, well, you know, I want to just draw this thing because this person uh, wants it. But at the same time, if you want to work at Pixar, then ask yourself, what would Pixar be looking for? And they actually tell you. They like have plenty of resources to figure out what they look for in artists. Just You just got to Google it. Remember, you guys are living in a different time. This information is available, man. They have like free education on the Khan Academy on how to animate. It's freaking boss. Uh, the last question says, so if I do a study of a torso, for example, the gesture, the lighting, and so on, uh, so it says, should I then try and paint the same torso with the same lighting and gesture? Yeah. I want to know how to learn as much as possible from the studies. Yeah. Uh, always ask yourself how much you actually learned. And the best way to do that is to test yourself. So if you don't know, the best way to do it is to test it. And if you don't do well, then that means you might not have been paying attention, right? Remember, you're allowed to fail. You know, you're allowed to make mistakes. Uh, That's Brendan it. Bankston said, oh, Brendan. Would you suggest using art of books from studios you want to work for a good source for fan art for your portfolio? Yeah, dude. Duh. Duh, Brendan. Duh, Brendan. <laughs> Duh, Brendan. Get a job. <laughs> <coughs> That's all the questions. Yep. Alright, cool, man. So, thanks again for everyone who's hanging out. Uh, I'm going to try to do these streams again like every once or once a week. Um, and once I start getting in the mojo of my new work schedule and stuff like that, I'm going to try to do it uh, twice a week and potentially three times a week. And then four times a week and then every day, you know, if I can. Even, uh, even though I'll be in LA for some of those days. I can still bring my laptop. I can still get connected to the internet somehow. Uh, I can still do something. Uh, even if it's like silent and just me painting and you guys have to watch. Because, you know, maybe I can't necessarily talk at the workplace. But I can definitely paint something and just do it at my lunch hour uh, with no consequence. Uh, especially if I do it on my own machine where I won't accidentally slip up and show some top secret stuff. Um, but, yeah, thanks again, guys. I got to get going. I need to eat. John, you need to eat too. Last question. <laughs> okay, go for it. So I know you did a video on anatomy with the upper body, but what would you do with the lower body? Uh, I'll probably need to make a video on that then. More about that. I will. There's plenty of things to teach. I'm just taking a break from tutorials for a second. So I just don't have time. Um, but I will soon. Anyway, uh, Barcelona. Should announce that again. Put it in the chat again. So here's a link to the event that we're going to do in Barcelona. Uh, please visit the site, especially if you can read in Spanish. I cannot. Let's see if it translates it, though. And, ah, uh, translated. And so, it's future, man. <laughs> it's nuts. So, yeah, we're going to be there. And then the next, the following week, we're going to be in Croatia, which is going to be epic. Uh, it's going to be epic two weeks. So please come by if you are local to this. If not, uh, you can still go. You know, there's, there's, there's no reason why you can't. It's funny, right? Like in Brazil, there was a guy from Texas that went to that one. Yeah. Uh, I was like, why didn't you go to one in America? He's like, I don't know. He's like, California is whatever, dude. He's like, Brazil, though? That's what it's about. And I was like, all right. So some people do that, and I, I applaud you if you do that kind of stuff. Either way, if you're there, this is going to be a great event. We're going to hang out, talk with all these. Uh, you're going to be able to talk with all of us, hang out with all of us. As well, we're going to do demonstrations and talk about you know the industry and help you guys out. And, uh, yeah, it's a good opportunity to meet other artists that are local to you, too, that you can start making friends. That was the best part, right? I think when we went there, there Brazil, like, they were shocked at how many other Brazilians were there, you know? that were interested they, they thought that nobody was interested in that city and, and our, like ironically there was so anyway peace out guys thanks for stopping by and uh take care <laughs>